Hey everybody, in today's gel press video, I'm going to do some fun things with rubbing plates and also just a quick trick on getting a 3D effect with your stencils like I've done here. You can see how those leaves almost look 3D as opposed to the way they normally look, which you can see here. This is one of the rubbing plates that I think you're just going to love. This is another one. I have lots of textures from these plates that I'm playing with, and this is another one of the 3D effects. I'm using my 6x6 gel press and golden fluid acrylics. As I was doing this, I wondered, but was too lazy to get up, if open acrylics would even be better for the technique that I'm going to show you today. Now I put down this, this is one of the turnabout stencils that I used in my most recent video. And I'm just going to wipe out with a shop cloth the design of this stencil. And then all I want you to do is just shift the stencil on the plate while the paint is wet. And you get these fun three dimensional effects. It's just sliding the stencil a tiny bit, and I'll show you a couple different ways to do that. So you get these fun little motion looking shapes, very different from what the traditional stencil looks like when you gel print with it. This is also golden fluid acrylic, my favorite. It's turquoise. And I like to use the magenta and the turquoise together, which you already know if you have seen any of my videos. This is one of the rubbing plates. I found these in Santa Fe, and I'm just going to press and slide that as well. And then I'll show you how it looks without sliding. But I like the motion and the 3D look that you get from shifting that plate just a little bit. I just printed it on top of the other print. Now you can dry the paints very quickly actually on these plates. You would think because they're plastic that it would stay on there for a little bit, but it actually dries right away. Again, I don't know if that would be the case with open acrylics. I'm just talking about fluid acrylics here. And I'm running my brayer across the plate to transfer some of that paint and use the plate more like a stamp. So in order to do that, I'll have to change the color that's on my plate. And I'll do that with a little bit of quinacridone magenta. That's the universe's one true magenta. It's beautiful. So now here, I'm just going to set the plate down just to transfer that. I'm not sliding it. I'm just showing you what the texture plate looks like by itself without any motion. And it's very different from when you slide the plate. So I'll pick that up and you'll see this very cool sort of starburst pattern that you get just using the plate the way it was designed. Actually, it's not the way it was designed. These are designed for rubbings where you can put a piece of paper over them and rub some charcoal or graphite across the plate to pick up some patterns. But anything with texture I use with the gel press. Now this does not work because it's not flat. I put some paint on there and I thought I could brayer it out, but you really don't get good coverage. So it's better just to pick the paint up off of your gel press and roll it onto the plate if you're going to use it in the stamping way and not just to add texture to something that's already on your plate. So you can do it like that. You can stamp it directly onto a print, but I like to pick it up off the plate because it makes the print imperfect and not just purely a stamped image. You always get that little bit of unpredictability with the gel press. And especially since these are sort of slippery, so you can see how easy it is for me to slide and see how you get those little motion effects. So I can just pick up just tiny little bits of that 
orange plate onto another print and get that little slidey look that you get from dragging the rubbing plate across your gel press. Now I will add a little bit of this beautiful gold in with the magenta and I have too much paint on the plate. For some reason with that larger container of magenta, I do that all the time. I always put too much down. Now this one is a really fun sort of geometric plate that I'm actually just going to rotate into the paint for a different kind of motion effect. And it just goes around the gel press. This would actually be fun on around gel press. <laughs> I should have thought of that, but it just goes around and gives you motion in the other direction. And that fun 3D effect that you get from shifting something on your plate. Next up is turquoise again. And I'll show you the difference between just using a stencil traditionally and shifting a little bit. I was going to wipe this out, but then I thought, why would I want to lose all those amazing leaves? I love this stencil. It's been in several of my gel press videos, so you probably recognize it. But I love these big, bold leaves, and I can just print them the regular way on top of another print. But now I'm going to take it, and with what's left, I'm going to shift. you got to pull really hard. <laughs> you got to shift it and make sure that the stencil retains contact with the plate the whole time you're shifting it and you'll get a completely different look of these leaves. It really does give them a lot of dimension and depth. So there they are. Totally different, a little more grungy, and a lot of fun. More turquoise and more leaves. This covers the plate really well. To me, it feels different than the Quinacridone Magenta, even though they're both fluid acrylics. This one has a little bit more body than the Magenta, and y'all know how uh, red pigments are different from every other pigment, no matter what medium you're talking about. And it's true with ink, it's true with pencils, and it's definitely true with paint. So I found these two paints to be very different. Okay, so I'm lifting again, and I'm going to show you this without the background noise of that other print that I printed on. I'm going to show you just the shifting. So you have to pull really hard. <laughs> Retain contact, and then pick up the print, and you'll see what a neat effect that is all by itself. See how much more 3D they are than just regular printed stenciling? This is the same effect with my Windows stencil, just shifted slightly to the left. This is a shifted one as well, double printed with two layers of leaves. This one is just a traditional print, but with the rotated texture plate in the background. This is another one of the rubbing plates. This is the first one that I showed you, just used in the traditional way. And this is a shifted plate. I hope you've enjoyed this. Head over to my blog for more information. And thanks so much for watching.